If you're new to App Store ads like I was just a few weeks ago, you're probably about to make a bunch of mistakes that will cost you a bunch of money, reduce the effectiveness of your campaign and limit your ad reach. In this video, I'm going to step through the three most common mistakes you need to avoid. Because as it turns out, avoiding these mistakes can boost the effectiveness of your App Store ads campaign and reduce your marketing costs. For the past few weeks, I've been going deep down the App Store ads rabbit hole. At first, it was to boost my visibility in the App Store, but soon I realized it started to actually have a meaningful impact on organic search results as well. We'll see where it goes in the long term, and I'll keep you updated along the way. In the meantime, if you want to reduce the costs of your App Store ads, simply subscribe to my channel and I'll show you what works and what doesn't with my own money. I tried App Store ads for one day. I spent a hundred bucks for two clicks, so I turned it off. Impressions go way up, engagements go way down, just seems like the quality of traffic is terrible. This is probably gonna be the very first problem you're going to run into when you first set up your App Store ads campaign. I know because I ran into this problem too and I burned through $800 within a few hours until I worked out something was wrong. It's not you, it's App Store ads. When you create a new app group, it will always default to search match. App Store ads describe search match as the easiest way to get your ads up and running. We automatically match your ad to users who are searching for apps like yours. But the real description should actually be the easiest way to waste your budget by automatically matching your ad to useless keywords from users who are clearly not searching for your app. And even if they were, it's gonna cost you a lot. And if you're new to App Store ads, you're probably gonna to wanna to turn this feature off. I thought adding keywords to my App Store ads campaign and marking them as exact match only was enough to ensure my ads only appeared for those exact match keywords. But this search match feature overrides your exact match rules. Within a few hours, I spent a bunch of cash on my campaign and I couldn't work out where the money was actually going. My keywords were showing no clicks, but my campaign was showing $800 spent. Turns out when you go to all keywords, then search terms, it will show you the exact search terms your keywords are appearing for. For this specific keyword, the exact match campaign was set to only show for the keyword learn piano. But to my surprise, App Store Ads was showing it for keywords like beats, music editing, and sheet music. I would consider these keywords low intent, meaning someone looking for music editing software or to read sheet music probably won't bother with a game designed for kids to learn the piano. For more control over your campaign spending, and where your search ads actually appear, always make sure the search match feature is turned off and target exact match keywords. For some reason, I never get impressions for the exact match keywords even when keywords have good popularity and max cost per tap, $2. When you first set up your ad group, App Store ads will automatically suggest a recommended default maximum cost per tap. Don't trust it, it's a lie, it lies to you. If you choose the default bid, you'll spend weeks with no impressions, and then one day App Store ads will say, hey, you need to increase your bid. With the experiment I ran, I set up my maximum cost per tap bid to $10, at least in the beginning anyway. It's something you can probably adjust later on. And I know what you're thinking, that seems crazy high. How on earth can I generate $10 for every install from the App Store? Well, first, this is not actually the bid for the number of installs to your app. No, 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 no. It's actually a lot worse than you think. This is the maximum you're prepared to pay every time someone taps on your ads. They might not even install it. So why would you bid $10? It seems crazy. Well, you want to be seen. And to be seen, you have to outbid someone else. Every time someone searches for the keyword you're targeting, a mini auction happens. Set the bid too low and you'll never be seen. I never actually reached the maximum cost per tap bid. It cost me on average 55 cents for my visibility campaign, $3.97 for my launch campaign, and $6.38 for my experiment campaign. Why do I have three campaigns, I hear you ask? All with a $1,000 daily budget? Well. That brings me to mistake number three. All my keywords were in a single campaign. Then when my experimental keywords reached the daily limit, the entire campaign paused. That meant my app no longer had any visibility in the app store. I had several campaigns running with separate objectives. I'm not sure what the best practice is, but what works for me is to separate them into separate campaigns. My visibility boost campaign is the campaign that only targets the exact match keywords for search terms people use to find my app. Piano run, learn piano game, and piano run. 
This campaign was the whole reason I fell into this App Store ads rabbit hole in the first place because organic visibility on the App Store is kind of bad at the moment, especially for those new apps. So I'm paying so people can actually find my app on the App Store. And because it's only targeting my keywords, the name of my app, the volume is super low, but I want the campaign to keep running. Before splitting this into its own campaign, I would have all keywords running in a single campaign. And part of my learning journey has just been to experiment with keywords and see whether I can get any traction. A single keyword exhausted my entire campaign budget, which meant my visibility keywords disappeared too. So I've created an experimental campaign where I can play around with the keywords without impacting visibility. One thing that has been really useful with the App Store ads is the ability to test different keywords and markets. For example, my app Piano Run started as a learn piano tool with some gamification elements. After launching, it became kind of clear that most people are using it on their iPhone with only 20% of downloads actually happening on the iPad. For me, that's a clear sign that users may prefer a more casual gaming experience than an entire Learn Piano tool. And that has a big impact on which keywords I should be targeting in organic results. Is it a Learn Piano tool with some gamification or a casual piano game? Turns out, I can run an experiment with App Store ads to see the results, target different keywords and see what users prefer the most. And this market research and feedback informs what features I'll be building into the app and what direction I'll take it. And this is something that would take months to discover with organic search alone. Now, it only takes a few weeks. So to recap, turn off search match for every ad group you create, set a high bid for keywords when you first start, and create new campaigns for each keyword group objective. If you have any specific questions about App Store ads, let me know in the comments. I'll see if I can help. I also recommend checking out the App Store Growth Academy by Teodora. I'll put a link in the description below. She's been kind enough to help me every step of this App Store ads journey.